Hello again. So I'm here with my page for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and I, I really like it but I'm not going to do it like this. Um, I think it's a rather drab way to finish my book in these colours when pretty much throughout all the book it's 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 got pretty colours in it. Um, I'm going to keep the background and I'm going to keep the heart but I am going to remove the bow and I think I said when I first made it that I would have preferred a blue bow um, but anyway we're not going to use that bow on here. What I did, I, I haven't done anything to it, um, what I thought I might do to make it more colourful is to go through now next to me here since the beginning of this project which was probably December last year when you know they put it out there I have had a box I don't know if you can see it let me a box full of all the bits that I've been using and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out some of the scraps perhaps from in here now um, this I haven't used in here this was a little piece I used on my circle of friends but that's fine I can use that and I'm going to just go through this rummage through this box and look see there's a little flower and just find some pieces because last week when I was not last week sorry last um, month I really liked the little flowers that I made on that page and so I thought maybe I can do a similar thing on this page, look here's a bit of, could use a bit of that, um, and just add some colour to brighten it up a bit. I could use things that I haven't used as well, because there's plenty of that, I can assure you. There's plenty of that I didn't touch, you know, I didn't um, even scratch the surface of what I've got here to use. And I think that might be the case for a lot of people. You know, they got things out they thought they would use and they didn't use. That's okay. Just a bit of that, that's lovely. Oh, I do like that. I don't need all that though. Oh, but that's okay, I can put it back. Um, you know, and have some pretty things. I need some more pinks I think. Oh there's another bit of that. That's what I used for the cottage remember. Like that. So we can use a bit more of that. Uh, use that. That might work. And make it more cheerful. A lot more cheerful. Um, and then oh, what's that? Um, there's that I used that I think uh, a bit of that but that's a bit thick so we could start with that um, and then I'm going to make like some of the little flowers and do some French knots and things like that all around the heart. I think that would be nice. And I might even do some down the bottom as well. And then what I thought might be interesting is I've got my little jar here full of all little odds of the threads and things that have been used on not just this project but any embroidery project like the circle of friends I've been doing as well look there's a little bit of embroidery ribbon as well 
um, and I've just been sticking them in here and I might use these threads in here you know for flower centers and things like that or for the French knots just to add some different colors and just see what happens as I go along uh, so all I'm going to do let's just move that is with my fabrics here like I can use that and I think I've got a bit more of that somewhere as well so we'll put that to one side is get my fabric and I don't need I don't need big circles for this I just need little circles and they don't need to be perfect at all um, that's a bit big perhaps I only want them like that would be the biggest I'd probably want them and I could probably get another one out of that as well Okay, like that, and I'll just pull all my bits. Um, this one's got some nice greens on it, and it's got pinks on it as well. So I could even, to save a little bit of time perhaps, oops, my son just came home, just layer that over and cut a few out at a time, and I can trim them as I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut lots and lots of little circles out ready to get started and I'll do that and then I'll come back. Okay so there's lots of little circles cut out and they're just placed on there at the moment just to give me an idea of how many I might need. They won't appear like that when it's finished but it gives me a you know good starting point doesn't it um so what i need to do is now just take them all off and uh, uh probably invisible stitch the heart into place Okay, so I'm just, because I won't be seeing, um, I won't see the outside of the heart. What I might do to start with is just embellish the top part of the heart and see what it looks like. If, it, if I feel it needs it all the way around, then I will do it. But I'll come back and show you what it looks like just doing the top part. And hopefully I will be able to disguise that square edge there as well as I do it. So, um, we got any cotton. I got sore fingers from the cold. Uh, at the moment, not that you need to know that, but... <laughs> Put some scissors away. Not with scissors everywhere. Uh, I don't think that is a good needle. Maybe that one's a bit. I think that one. It's a bit sharper. So I'm just using a sewing machine thread. Um, scan fill doesn't matter what kind you use. You don't really you don't see it anyway. And just as I do with the background, you just you can start in the middle here. I. I didn't really want it to be tacked down in the middle though because it's nice to be able to have a look under so I might just go around the edge 
there. Because, yeah, uh, it will become more secure. That's not a big enough knot. Um, it will become much more secure once the flowers go in to place because I'll be sewing them right on the edge. Okay, um, yeah, I'll just do that. So you won't see these little stitches. It's going through all those layers. I've just come in a little bit from the edge so that I know it's secure. So that's kind of what it looks like. But like I said, I'll be doing the flowers right on the edge so these won't be even seen when it's finished. So I'll go ahead and stitch the heart on and then I'll be back. Alright, so that is all stitched on now, just all around the edge. I did leave that liftable and that one liftable. That one is stitched into place. I also cut out some little circles of tool and uh, a little bit of this the scarf that I had as well. I may or may not use those. So... Uh, I'll just get started. First of all, we need a needle, don't we? So, um, uh, no, looking for. A specific one. That one? Is that? No, that's not it. Oh, it's not here. Where is it? It must have. What about that one? That one might work. Okay. So, this, <laughs> and this one's a, like a cheat needle because you don't have to thread it, you just sort of plonk it through, but it may not work very well for this. Um, I'm wondering whether I should just stitch them all on first with a normal thread and then come back and add little French knots in them. That might be easier to do it that way. Okay, I think I might do that actually. So I can use a plain thread. I will use a thicker one than a Oops, sewing machine thread though. This one's come unraveled a bit. Just do that up. Okay. So I might just a couple in place and then just to show you um, and I might do it the way that I had it done before or well not exact because I don't know the exact way but what I was doing was kind of placing like they're out of order now but all similar ones you know there might have been three or there might have been four there's four of that one by the look of it so placing them around the heart like that oh. but if I do that then I can't just do the top part but that's okay because I can leave two aside in case I want to use them so we've got those there like that. So we'll start 
I'll start here right on the edge and all I'm doing is coming up through the little flower piece and then I'm just going to like almost put a little plate in the center of it to make it curl a little bit just like that and then what I'll do is it just a little extra stri stitch on the back to hold it there okay um, I'm just going to take them randomly I think because otherwise I think it gets a little bit hard to do so come up and we'll do that one next to it like that and do the same sort of thing maybe on a slightly different angle next to it like that and do a little stitch and that'll just sort of so it doesn't get loose little one they're not all the same size stitch maybe one of those and I can leave gaps you know I can come back over here a bit oh I think the bigger ones I was going to put the bigger ones down the bottom it doesn't really matter So I can have a gap in there to do something else in there later. I could do some beading if I wanted to. And when I place it down, see how that the edge of that flower goes up. So I kind of push the edge of this one up against next to it. And the center is placed on the edge there like that, like where I put that row of stitching before. So, that. so hopefully this will make it look a little bit happier. And although I did love the gray, um, I just think it needs, oh, is it? green or is that green? I think that's the green. I think it needs to be happier than the grey. You know at the end of the book it's been such a lovely project I don't want to end on a down. <laughs> and that's a thicker fabric that one. Just do this one. So you can see that's the kind of effect you get to start with anyway. So I'll go ahead and keep going around all the top to see what that looks like and I'll come and come back and show you. Alright, so I've stitched them onto the top there. I quite like them just on the top. I think I will just have them. Remember, they still have to have some French knots and beading and things like that done to them. So they'll, they're not quite finished. And I thought, um, uh, I did add a few little bits of tool in there as well. And then down the bottom here, I thought, uh, um, do I want that? Is that the color I wanted there? Maybe I thought I would do some down the bottom, perhaps. 
Um, like that. Along the bottom. Um, I don't want to, maybe that needs to be up like that. I don't want it looking exactly symmetrical down the bottom. Something along those lines. Do we need two of those? Is there a different colour? Uh, I haven't got one of that. Oh, yes, I have there. That one's a bit bright. What about that? Let's put that one there and that one over there. Like that, that might work. And like have embroidered stems. These will be like these flowers. So they're not going to be circles. They're going to be like, you know, little flower type things. And some little French knots, similar to this sort of thing on my pincushion across the bottom there may look pretty as well and I think that may do it I I may put a nice ribbon if I can find one just hanging down um, but it has to be I'd like um, it has to be the right kind of ribbon not the same binding because that's it's just a bit too big although it's not too bad but it's no I'm not going that way now um I was thinking of a different kind of bow so that's my fingers are really so I cut my finger again with my thumbnail while I was sewing and oh so sore and you know how it is in cold weather they always feel worse don't they um, so that's what I'm doing uh, I think I'll give it a break now and I'll come back tomorrow and finish it off perhaps no I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. That's what I'm going to be doing. So, uh, the stems. Um, I'm going to try and use some of these. Oh, actually, it might. I might save these to do for my cover. And there's a big piece in there, actually. I could use some of that for the centers and keep them just different shades of yellow or something or gold in there I don't know. I'll see what I've got in my embroidery threads anyway that might be a little bit bright we'll see uh, so these I'm just doing some straight stitches for the stems same sorts of flowers as this with French knots in the centre and then I will also do some straight stitching and little French knots around perhaps so I'll I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you what um, I'll show you it finished because I don't think unless I find a ribbon I don't think I'm doing anything else on that page okay I'll see you then I just wanted to show you how I'm doing the stems of these little flowers. 
I'm using stem stitch which is you take a stitch like that's my last stitch there and I go under and come up there but when I take another stitch I take it halfway down that previous stitch I kind of move that stitch over a little bit and come up under it so I can keep it straight and then I take the needle past this point here and over here and come up like that and then I do the same again I just go under there like that and up over here I'm using six strands of embroidery thread and that's what the effect will be and then I've taken out some silk ribbons I thought I may do a few leaves with some silk ribbons and then come back and do a few of the little um, this sort of they're like a pistol stitch but you're not actually using the same thread so it's like a long stitch with a French knot at the top so I'll come back and I'll do that at the end and then it should be done unless I've still got to do all the French knots though so uh, I just thought I'd show you how I was doing those stem stitches so those ones are done and I thought I would try out a little bit of um, silk ribbon for some leaves coming off them I have a book and I bought this book years ago uh, for two dollars from the op shop or thrift store it is by Rita Wa Weiss no by Diane Deanna Hall West and that's what it's called and it's actually quite a nice little book I it's been sat on my bookshelf for years and I barely ever pulled it out but it has some nice flowers and things in it that you can do and I just want a simple kind of leaf stitch it shows you how to do all the um, different types of leaves and things um, so basically I've just got a circle for a flower so I want something that might look nice with a circle flower which would be like aster it's a circle shape look how simple those leaves are for the aster something like that a lot of them use the same kind of stitch some of them also use the ribbon and then they go over the top with embroidery as well I've done a little bit of silk embroidery but not a lot I'm you know I'm not knowledgeable on it I just know a couple of basic stitches um, so I think that like, you can do twisted ones as well which can look quite effective um, but I think for the circle I think that aster flower is probably a good one because it suits a round flower so I think that's what I will do and I'm not using a very large silk ribbon I don't know what size it is that's embroidery thread that one I've just got <laughs> that's embroidery thread too um I've just got a bag because see I I I found them all um, at the op shop but I think I've shoved a couple in there as well some of them these ones aren't even open oh that's a nice color is that the same I think it is okay so that it is a what size is it let's have a look Um, seven millimeter is that doesn't look seven millimeter doesn't that one might be a bigger one these ones I think might be more oh 
they could be because that's seven millimeter there as well and it's quite small so that's what I'm using and uh, let me see if I can remember how to do this I think we just go up oh oh that's a bit far away <laughs> it's not even joined let me let me just pull that through <laughs> got to look like it's going to be joined as well and you have to use quite a large needle to actually get the ribbon through the fabric it has to make a large enough hole for that to happen so let's see if we can get a bit closer this time there we go that looks a bit better And so I'm going to lay it down where I might like it. And then I, sorry, you can't even see. So I've got my ribbon coming up. I decide how long I might want that leaf. Let's say about there. And then I put my needle back through there. Like that. Pull it through but then as I get close to finishing I slow down a little bit because I don't want to pull it all the way through see you want to leave a little curl on the end like that where it's come through and then I'm going to do another one on this side here being careful not to pull the ribbon too tight so we don't ruin the last leaf that I made. So I've got it coming out there now and then just straightening out my ribbon, deciding where I might want it. I might want it there, putting it through like that and gently just finishing it off like that and so I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of those I probably won't carry the ribbon across because the more loopiness of the ribbon you have behind the more chance you'll have of um, pulling it so how I don't know Yeah, that might be the easiest way. I'm not quite sure. There we go. Okay. And I'll leave a little tail on that. There we go. So that's what it will look like going across the bottom there. So that's all done with the French knots and I quite like how that's turned out. I, I used two different colour. It's very subtle, more yellow and more orangey colours in the thread. I actually like the way it looks now so I don't want to add too much more to it at all I did want a couple of little uh, put a couple of beads in though um, and this ribbon is four millimeter not seven millimeter so um, just in case you were wondering so I have I have some beads here some gold beads that I might just Put a few in. Um, need a needle. Look at my <laughs> my poor beading needle. They get bent very quickly sometimes. 
uh, I don't know if I have that colour thread. It's always best to try and use the right colour thread. Just let me just look. I've got, um, oh, here we go. This one might be all right. That one might be all right. We'll use that. Okay. I don't know what this is. Heavy duty thread. I get a lot of these from the op shop also. Say if I can get this threaded. Sometimes you've got to cut the end on an angle just to help it get through. Because, of course, beading needles are very, very fine to get through the beads. Oh, I think I got it. Did I get it? Yes. There we go. Whew. Amazing. Okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of beads in the centre. Perhaps not in the centre of every one of them. I'll just see how it looks. Just to add a little bit. it. I could almost have another one in there. I don't know if you can see that. So just adding it along with the French knot. That one was slightly off centre, so I added three to that. I won't add one to that. I may add one to that. And I'll probably add one over here as well. So I might just... Put a little... Got a lot of thread here but I don't want to be threading my beading needle too many times. Which one down here? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of do a little stitch going over there in a couple of spots. It doesn't go all the way through, but just so it doesn't, it's not one great big stitch. So we'll put a couple in here as well. Yeah. Just like that. And then I'll come over and I'll put one over here and then I'll just put them every so often up here and then perhaps that will be it. Okay, I'll be back soon. So the beading's done now. Let's put those on the way. Oh, 
Okay, so the beading's done and I found a couple of ribbons. I've got this beautiful raspberry pink one and I've got a pale pink one. My first instinct would be to actually go for the raspberry because it's so pretty. But then I think by the time I put it there, that's all you basically focus on is the ribbon and I don't want that. So <laughs> as lovely as it is, I may use that on the cover or something like that. So I will keep it out because I do like that one. I also have a very pale pink one, which doesn't catch the eye as much, but then you get to see everything, don't you? And I was going to just put a, like a bow, but I'm not sure if I want to just put a bow or not. Let's have a look. So I could just put a bow there, like that. I could use a flower. I've used these throughout the little book as well. And that might look pretty to have a flower in it like that to finish it off. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe that's what I'll do. That one's got a bit of a kink in it there. I don't think that will matter, do I? Maybe I need to press it so it doesn't have a kink in it. Maybe bring it down just a little bit to there and stitch it on like that just to finish it off. It doesn't have the same impact as that, but that's the purpose. I, I want to be able to look at all the prettiness everywhere, not just the bow. So let me just put my iron on. Okay. I'll do that and then I'm going to say it's done. I like the little beads, not too many, just catches the eye and adds a little bit of sparkle, which is really nice. So, I'll put this book away. Now that iron is heating up. Okay, let's have a look. Might just try it on the end first. <laughs> Make sure it's not going to melt it. Okay. Have a look there. How long? Cut it a bit longer. Okay. Like that, that needs a stitch in it now. So let me get some thread. There is that. I think it might move over a bit there. About there. I think that's a bit better. Oh. Oh no, I 
needle just broke. Look at that. Oh my. Oh, that didn't work very well then, did it? Let me just... <laughs> oh my goodness. That was a weak needle. I'll have to try that again. Okay, oh, let's get ourselves a stronger needle this time, shall we? Let's just secure it on there first, might be easier. Find our centre a bit. There we go. Okay. There. Yep, I think so. That looks all right. There, like that. And I will trim these up a bit because I don't want them coming off the page. Um, what am I going to put on there? I might need something in the centre. Kind of like the center of that in that pink color. Uh, so let me think. Oh, 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 I just saw something. I know what I can do. I think. Um, what about a little bit of that, one of those? I don't think I want the grain on it. About that, that will work. Okay, I shall stitch. And because it's an embroidered flower, these threads get hidden in the stitches, which is nice. Oops. <laughs> oh, dear. Huh. There we go. Oh. 
Come on. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. Finish it off and it's done. That's it. I like that. Okay, so that's our last page done. That's June, which was hand painted or hand dyed background and a lovely heart. Okay, so that goes in my book. That's the last page of my book there and that one will go right there like that like that And it goes quite nicely with the page next to it as well, which is always nice, but not the same sort of thing. I'm so glad I didn't go ahead with the grey ribbon. I just think that's so much prettier. And you get to see the lovely doily still. Um, yes, I'm quite happy with that. And that is it. Now, I did start start sewing my pages together but I I haven't finished so next week I'm going to show you how I'm putting my book together spine wise perhaps and see mine's a bit different I've done mine different a lot of people are having problem because that's their first page when I started I did a double spread so this page is actually going to be attached to my cover there and then my title page is that. This page here, I made a little booklet and in this booklet are all the pages, um, like June, hand dyed or hand painted background and a lovely heart. Um, And I put what I was going to do there. The same as for May, favorite color and beautiful bird. And I just wrote down what I was using and what I was going to do. If I changed my mind, then I could, I did this in pencil so that I could rub it out and change it according to what I ended up doing on my page. Um, like I still haven't put on this that I added a bow. So I will have to put, I put that I lengthened the length of it. I already knew I was going to do the French knots with the flowers with some beads. So that never changed. But the bow, the bow did. So um, I only have to, yeah, because I didn't even put the grey bow on there. So anyway, that's what that is. That's my book. Oh, and there's a page there for my cover that I left. And then putting it all together, I will write how I put it all together on the back. And so I will have that. I do, uh, is it dated? January 2022. So that's okay. Um, and this is the actual spine from the cover of my book that I'm using. It was so destroyed that I had to 
you know, it had to be removed. But I, I just wrote what I usually have in my description box under the video on this and I'm keeping that in here as well. So um, that's what I put on the first page. Um, and because I did that, I attached all my pages, like that's one double page. And then you turn it over and that's another double page there. And then you turn it over and that's another one there. They're joined. Um, and then you turn it over and these ones I haven't stitched down yet. Um, that's another double page. And then the last one is also a double page. So the back of this page is going to get attached to my back cover. So there are no spare pages in mine. And so that will go like that. And I've got an idea. I think I'm going to do tabs or something like that around there. And then I might make just a, um, what are they called? A wrap, a pretty wrap to tie off, to put over it. I don't, I don't know if I'll put anything on the cover. I may put a pretty doily or something on it. But I'm not going to go overboard because, you know, I kind of want it finishing now. So we'll do, we'll play with that next week. So thank you so much for watching this week. I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you next time around. Bye.